we're gonna see if the uh, second sterling starts. And uh, tempt fate, I guess. Well, hey there. So yeah, Tempting Fate Tours is back, and yeah, it's been a while since you've heard from us. After the last episode from February, we were pretty exhausted after covering 5,800 miles in two sterlings through eight states during eight days. That night, we got to my friend Brian's farmhouse and pretty much collapsed into our beds, and that was the end of the last episode a few months ago. We inched the cars into the barn next to the hulk of Brian's granddad's old truck. We left Brian the keys to the two cars, and we were off to the airport. But we hadn't left for good, because we knew we'd be back for the rescheduled Radwood eight weeks later. And so, on to what we decided was called Radwood Rebooted. The show was on Saturday the 23rd of April, so Tom came in on the Wednesday, and Tom found both cars had a thick layer of dust and other barn crud on them. That included cat paw prints, but we decided cat paw prints are good because the more cat, the fewer mice. Both of the cars started right up after sitting for a couple of months, which was kind of gratifying. That afternoon, Tom began to inventory the seven zillion sterling parts in boxes that Jeff gave him. They almost filled the trunks of both cars and we wanted to sort them out. Tom picked me up at the airport in his Sterling, still covered in barn find grunge. Our first stop, naturally, was AutoZone, again, for a variety of cleaning and polishing and making them all pretty stuff. Friday dawned, more cleaning, more fixing. We thought we were gonna have to change a bunch of tires to sort out the wheel badges, but smart Tom, he figured out the center's pop out. Way easier. <laughs> I also replaced the window switches on the driver's door. The driver's window itself probably runs a little faster, but sadly, the door mirrors still don't move. Then Tom tackled a job I had shrugged and kind of ignored. So, this is a fix that I gave up on, but Tom, who likes doing these things, relishes it. Go. The automatic driver's belt in my car 285,000 miles now works properly, courtesy of the enormous crates of spare parts that came with Tom's car. Yes, thank you to Jeff, and uh, I'm gonna miss watching John Limbo under a seatbelt. I got really good at that. Yeah, I noticed. And that takes us to Radwood itself, at last, Saturday, April 23rd. We were up early to drive the 100 miles or so to Circuit of the Americas from our hotel. We stopped at a car wash to hose off both cars, and I had to vacuum my carpet thoroughly. At Circuit of the Americas, we drove in, we waited in line, and then came just totally wonderful, unexpected validation. The nice red-headed lady who was directing traffic after the ticket taker looked at me, looked at the car, did a double take, and said, Oh my God! You're those guys in the Sterlings. You're famous. And of course, I didn't get it on video. Sorry, Alex. Tom and I traded off keeping an eye on the cars, and we were really honored to be up front in Radwood Royalty, along with a bunch of very cool rides and next to two friendly Land Rover restoration and modification folks. They had cookies. We wandered the show, and Tom did a complete video walkthrough while I just took pictures. Some of my favorites, the ones that I remembered, the tiny Japanese van, painted up as the mystery machine from Scooby-Doo, a whole row of Toyota Mr. 2 mid-engine sports coupes, and the bustleback Lincoln Continental, the one that you just don't ever, ever see on the roads today. So this is the point where you ask, but okay, what happened to the Sterlings? Weren't you trying to sell both cars? The answer is, yep, 
We sure were. Art from Radwood suggested we do a silent auction, so we made up some sheets, and he even gave us a shout out on the PA. Thank you, Art. Turned out we only got one bid on one car from a young man named Cooper. We chatted with him. He knew a whole lot about Sterling's, but had never actually seen one in real life before, which was really cool. He bought Tom's car. He had his choice of either one. And he and his dad, Robert, came by our hotel that night and trailered it away. Well, down to one car. As Tom said, I'm excited that someone's excited about the cars. And Cooper surely was. I had to leave Austin the day after Radwood for another work event, which left Tom with my car for a day. But wait, there's more. Next day, I swapped a whole flurry of text messages with Cooper's dad. He ended up making an offer on my car as well. And I gulped and shrugged and took it. Robert came by the hotel and drove the second Sterling back to their place after I'd left. Robert and Cooper sent us some photos and they're waiting for the paperwork to clear to get the cars on the road. But enjoy them guys. We hope to see you again. Send us more pictures. Hope you drive them way more than we did. We had 5,800 miles, so there's your bar. Okay, what's next for Tempting Fate Tours? We had fun doing this. We solved our Winter Blues cabin fever problem, and we hope you guys enjoyed it too. We saw some incredible sights, we met a bunch of great people, and we did something that a lot of people told us was either idiotic or impossible or both. So, we're gonna do another one, of course. I mean, why wouldn't you? So, you may be wondering, what are the cars? We're probably done with Sterling's for now, and we're not totally sure about the cars, but we do have some ideas. At least one of them is going to be British. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, here on YouTube, and we really hope you enjoyed it. Leave us comments. We love responding to comments, and uh, if you guys are inspired to do your own Tempting Fate tours, tell us about that too. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye.